All right, latest AI video today is all about agents. Agent slash auto GPT slash assistance. It's all the same thing. It's probably the most exciting thing I think about this AI development that we've had. I'll explain why it's all the same thing in a second. Just back to some basics. LLM is a large language model, which is ChatGPT or Google's Bard or Facebook's got one or Anthropic. There's a few of these large language models which most of us now have interacted with. They're great. They've read everything. Um, they speak perfect English or other languages. They interact with us. They understand perfect English. They're fantastic. But still today, most of us are interacting with these large language models on something like ChatGPT. We're having a conversation. We're getting information back and we're doing something else with that information. The future of this stuff is going to be AI agents. And that's where we automate what we do with these large language models. So we're going to have uh, automation layer that sits between us and the large language models and does what we're trying to do. The difference between the LLM and the agent is the LLM doesn't have any memory, first of all. Every time you interact with the LLM, with ChatGPT, it doesn't know who you are. It's a bit of a hack when you go on the website because it's got a thread and it's kind of saved the previous thread and it feeds that back with the next question you ask. But the actual model itself, when you ask, every time you ask the next question, it's forgotten everything that came before it. That's just how they work. It's fine, but it's how they work. The AI agent is going to have, first of all, a memory. So it's going to store your previous conversations in a database so it can remember the interactions you've had so it can use that to feed future information. It's going to have access to the internet if you want it to. It's going to have access to docs, which you give it. It's going to have access to your goals and objectives, which is probably the most important thing if you've given that to it and it's going to be able to write code um, which enables it to do most things online. So basically it's a way to automate our interaction with these large language models. When you extend that, it automates a lot of what we do in life. If you think about your everyday life and work, most of what we're doing is compressing data. Right? We walk around the office or the home or whatever we do these days on, on the phone or on a Zoom or in meetings and we take in data. We listen to people, we read, we watch videos, we take in data, we then compress that and hand it off to the next person. We send an email or a Slack or something and the next person takes in some data and they pass it off to the next person. In big companies they do this for multiple people, nothing really happens at the end of the day, you just trans information getting transferred. This is, what, this is what LLMs do for a living. They compress data, they're very good at this and they don't forget anything that they've heard or been told. So all those tasks are going to be automated. The humans are going to get involved when we need to be involved. And that's a good thing. It's going to take along all these menial tasks and it's going to leave us to do the important stuff that the machines can't do yet. So an example, I've got an AI agent and I tell it, hey, my goal today is going to be to biggest, be the biggest uh, influencer on TikTok. And it's going to go off. And it's going to work out, okay, that's a pretty big goal. How do, we, uh, how do we do that? And it's going to probably go to TikTok first of all, find out who the biggest influencers are. It's going to come across Mr. Beast, and it's going to watch all of Mr. Beast's videos. It's going to look at all of his content, look at his uh, visual content. It's going to watch Mr. Beast's videos and see what he's, uh, uh, interviews, see what he says about how to be an influencer. It's going to go to the next 100 influencers and look at all the how-to videos. It's going to learn how to do this. It's going to come back, maybe ask us a question or two, or it'll just go off on its own. It'll then write a script. It'll write a script to create a video. It'll write a script to create a website to point to the TikTok videos, whatever you, whatever you need to do to, to be the biggest influencer. It'll just go off and do it on its own without human intervention. You can apply that to anything in life. A good example might be um, a health agent. So you tell the agent what you're trying to do, you're trying to uh, complete a marathon in, in the six months, it's going to create a training program, it's going to follow you around, you're going to connect that to your, your watch or your device which is going to feed back everything you've done, it's going to tell you where you're falling short or where you're getting ahead, it's going to give you a um, nutrition plan, it's going to do everything that you need based on you and what you've done or haven't done to achieve that goal. Another good example of an agent is a travel agent. So back to the travel industry, 
you know, I'm going to uh, France next month. I, we've all done the itinerary planner, you know, tell me the top 10 things to do in, in Paris. But now you're going to feed in your specific goals. And I talk about this a lot, this personalization. It doesn't take in your last 10 years of travel and last time you went to a city you stayed in this hotel, therefore you want to stay in that hotel again. It's going to give you information on the fly. So you're going to tell it your specific goals for that trip, who you're going with. I'm going with the kids, they're young, they don't walk too far. I'm going with this person, they don't like to eat this kind of food. You're going to get all these specifics and it's going to build it around you. So it's going to learn exactly what you want. You're going to give it feedback and say, I've done the Eiffel Tower, don't want to do that again. And it's going to build around your specific needs and wishes for that trip. It's going to be your personal agent. It'll remember everything you want it to remember. If you want it to forget the last trip and just start again, it'll do that. So this is where this stuff goes. I think the most important thing about the agents is that they write code. So these LLMs, the last six months really, have come a long way in understanding and writing code. It's what ChatGPT has really put a lot of focus on. When you can write code, you can do most things online. So you can write scripts to scrape websites. You can make scripts to go through forms online and book flights and book hotels. Uh, you can also learn just how to use websites. So you can learn how to use Salesforce and everything we do in Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever tools you're using, your agent will be able to do as well. So every time you want to send an email to the top thousand prospects to sell them this kind of software, you just tell your agent to go off and do it and it works out the best way to do it. This has no bounds really. This is gonna, this is gonna take over in business it's going to take over in education. Um, look at Imad Mostak. He's, he's sort of a leader in speaking about this in education. Everyone in developing countries is going to have a education agent. It's going to teach you anything and everything you'd like to learn. And it's going to be at your level. So it will immediately go to your level of understanding of that subject. And it will teach you the next level of understanding. Think of it about learning a language. You've now got a buddy that you can speak to about any subject you want in any language you want. So if I love talking about soccer and I'm trying to learn Spanish, I can sit there to my heart's content so talking about the last 30 years of soccer matches in Spanish with somebody who can also speak back to me and pick up as I start to pick up the words and start teaching me new words. That's a reality, that's reality today. I don't think all the tools are out there yet. A lot of them are still broken. You try them, they don't quite work the way you expect them to, but this is out there today. Um, we're going to see tools, we're going to see AI agents in all aspects of life. No one quite knows if we're going to have, each of us have lots of agents. Maybe I've got a health agent and a language agent and a travel agent and a business agent and all these different agents. Or if one company owns that and we each kind of have one agent that does all of that work for us. I don't think it matters that much, we'll see how these things play out. But I think each company will have an agent, almost like a customer service agent. So when I'm planning a trip, I can go and ask the, the ferry company, again, this is not me asking, and this is my agent saying, listen, we're going to go for a bike ride in the afternoon. We'd like to catch a ferry from Source Lead or to San Francisco after five o'clock. Can, can you send me the timetable? And the, the Golden Gate Ferry agent will come back and say, yeah, we've got ferries at 5.30, 6, 6.30. My agent will grab one, stick it in my calendar, and start building the itinerary around that. So this is all agents building stuff without us needing to be involved at each step because they know what we're trying to do. They know our goals and they know our objectives in a vacation or in our, our work life or in our home life. And then the more they learn, the more they start to do things behind the scenes without us even knowing it because they're trying to preempt what we're, what we're trying to do. That gets pretty scary pretty quickly because you can give it a very broad goal and it can go off and go a little bit nuts and do things you wouldn't expect. That's when some of these people get a little bit scared and they start talking about these agents becoming AGI, which is Artificial General Intelligence, which is where they're more intelligent than a human, uh, which creates a whole different potential set of problems, which is where this stuff gets very scary. That's what OpenAI are trying to build, an AGI. Uh, they're quite open about that. That, that is their goal. Um, but as we progress towards that, these agents, we have to look at them as a help not a hindrance, albeit quite a scary help. And I think we need to take advantage of it. And this is where they can take over a huge part of our work life, especially. 
and they will start replacing jobs, but we have to just stay on the front foot here and look for how to find our place as humans so that we don't run out of jobs because that would be quite a problem. That's it for today. That's agents, assistants, auto GPT. It's all kind of the same thing. It's just automating our use of these AI tools. I think that's what we're gonna see in the future, in the next few months, in the next few years. These are gonna take over the world. Uh, more to come in the future. Thanks for listening.